Okay, let's talk about the uh, resistance equation and uh, what it means. So first off, the resistance equation is simply resistance equals pressure divided by flow. Um, we get into a more complicated version with uh, Poiseuille's uh, equation, and the resistance becomes uh, 8 nu uh, L, where nu is the viscosity uh, and by the way, uh, this thing is new. Uh, it's pronounced new. It's a Greek letter. Um, so eight new times the length of the vessel um, divided by pi times the radius to the fourth. So radius to the fourth. And the important thing about this equation is that it just tells you that the radius to the fourth is the dominant factor in this. So as the radius increases, the resistance goes up greatly. All right, so let's move on to the um, other important point of the resistance equation, and that is um, the um, vascular exam likes to equate resistance and blood flow with the Ohm's law which is resistance and electricity. So we're just going to write that out as Ohm's law. Um, so you do need to know that uh, there is a certain equivalence, if you will, between resistance and blood flow and resistance and electricity. Um, and electricity resistance is called Ohm's law. That's, that's all you need to know about the resistance equation. So volumetric flow is Q, which we introduced in our previous little video. And so Q is equal to the velocity divided by the area. And if we remember, that is also equivalent to the pressure over the resistance. Um, so uh, that's volumetric flow. So we typically will look at it in uh, the circulatory system as Q equals P over R. The, the same factor Q is known as the, in the simplified law of hemodynamics, um, that's that P change in pressure, P over R. So that's the simplified law of hemodynamics, which I don't know how much the exam's going to get into that one. The next thing we need to know about flow or if we recall Q, um, Q flow is Poissy's law or Poissy's law. I think the correct pronunciation is Poissy's, but uh, I don't know, some French pronunciation. If you know French better than I do, please let me know how to pronounce that. Um, Poissy's. Most people just say Poissy's law. So we'll just stick with Poissy's law. Anyhow, Poiseuille's law says that uh, the flow is um, equal to pi, because vessels are round, times the pressure, or if you want, the change in pressure, times the radius of the vessel to the fourth power over our familiar 8 um, nu. That's not a good nu. Let's make it a one that looks more like the Greek letter new. I don't know. That looks like an R still to me. Let's try. There we go. That's a new. Um, times the length of the vessel. Again, the important factor here is the R to the fourth. That tells you that the radius of the vessel is the most dominant factor in this equation. Everything else is pretty much uh, uh, meaningless. And as, and as I said earlier, if your viscosity changes enough to change the flow, then your patient died anyhow. Let's uh, briefly talk about Bernoulli's principle. And Bernoulli's principle, um, there's a lot of math that you can look up on uh, Wikipedia about Bernoulli's but basically what we're going to need to know is that Bernoulli says is that when there is a narrowing of a vessel, such as a stenosis, then um, the flow 
at one end is equal to the flow at the other end. That makes sense. Um, and in order to accommodate, and the flow in the center is the same too. So we've got three flows, um, but the velocity um, is different where the stenosis is. And you'll always have this situation where the velocity in the stenosis is much greater than the velocities uh, before or after the stenosis, or it's at least a little greater. Um, if it's a severe stenosis, it will be much greater. So that's Bernoulli's principle. We don't want to get into the mathematics behind it or anything like that. All we want to understand is that uh, the velocities increase when the vessel narrows. Reynolds number is a dimensionless uh, number that indicates whether or not turbulence is present. Um, you're never going to run into Reynolds number in the clinical setting. Um, it, it's just uh, purely theoretical for us. Um, so when Reynolds number is greater than um, 2000, that's going to equal turbulent flow. Um, when Reynolds number is less than a thousand, that's going to be laminar flow. Okay, that's all you need to know about um, Reynolds number. Uh, in between a thousand and two thousand, for our purposes in the circulatory system, we don't know if it's laminar or turbulent. The fact is, it'll probably be closer to laminar, but we don't need to worry about that. All we real the, the main thing to remember about Reynolds number is that over 2,000, it's turbulent, and that's uh, that you do need to know.